Hello, my name is Peter Parfit. Welcome to the New Brit Workshop. In this video, I'm going to show you how easy it is to make drawers for a workbench or any other project out of MDF. And these are made of solid 18mm MDF at the sides and back, and some veneered MDF at the front, on which I've put some solid wood edging. And the bottoms are made of MDF as well. So very simple method of construction, no dovetailing, but it's going to produce some very nice, strong drawers. And my stock has all been cut uh, to width. I've got to cut it to exact length, which I'll do on the capex saw behind me. And in order to finish off the edges of the veneered MDF, I'm using the Excalibur Tongue and Groove Edge banding set and I've used mine quite a bit hence you can see they look as though they've uh, been well used um, and we'll be seeing these in action shortly and these cutters allow you to put a really nice solid edge on the veneered MDF draw fronts. Now setting up these cutters is not uh, difficult at all. Uh, what I like to do is to put it in and get it as close to the right position as I can and with this particular cutter, uh, what I'm aiming to do is to get uh, this part dead center. So what I've done is I've done a little test cut, and you might be able to see here that uh, I'm slightly too high. And I can measure the difference using my caliper, and I've discovered I've got to go down by one millimeter. Now when it comes to the adjustment of this rear fence, getting that in the correct position, uh, what we're trying to do is to aim for the veneered edge to just be kissed by the cut. So we don't want the cutter to be cutting into that veneer at all. It's just got to be just right. And in order to adjust that, uh, I set it up the first time for the trial cut by placing my steel rule very, very carefully up against the sharp edge of the cutter and then adjusting my fence uh, so that uh, the, the two were in the same line. And that's a good starting point. And I can adjust that again once I've got the height exactly right. So just unlock that and now put this in. And I want to go down by one millimeter. That should be that. And lock this off. That should be just right. Let's give it a try. I've got this set up nicely now, and that's making a perfect cut. Now, if in your practice goes, you, you get a little bit of snipe, and I've got it here, and that's caused when the fence is too far back. Well, I've cut all my draw fronts uh, to size, and I'm now just going to run them through uh, the writer's table uh, to put the channel in, which will take the hardwood edging. Now getting this cutter set up in order to produce these edging strips uh, for the draw fronts is actually quite straightforward. There are two aspects. We want to make sure we get the height of the cutter right and we want to make sure we get the fence in the right position. If you've already done cuts in the past then you can keep uh, a piece and use this as your template for setting things up. But if you've not done that then this is the way to go about it. As far as height goes, you need to make sure that the uh, cutter is cutting uh, central and symmetrically through your stock. And this can be done by trial and error to start with, and then a bit of measurement, and then a final test, and you're there. Getting the fence set up to and fro is also quite straightforward. I use a steel rule and I position this right into the tongue element of the cutter and then bring the fence up against the steel rule so that the, that's all in one line. That's the fence and that uh, tongue element of the cutter. Once that's done, you can lock it off and do a test run. And once you're happy that everything is correct, make sure everything is properly locked up and safe and then you can produce your strips. And the way to produce a batch of edging strips is very simple. You run your piece of stock through and then take it to the 
table saw, in my case it's the Festool CMS unit, and slice off that piece that you've just molded. Then come back to the uh, writer table and put that through again, and then go over to the table saw and repeat the process. And that way you build up a stock of pieces of edging strip. So we've got all the bits now that we need to start assembling these drawers. I'm now going to put the edging strips onto the drawer fronts, then after that we can do the rest of the assembly. Now when you've got a lot of pieces of wood to cut all to the same length, it's a good idea to set up some sort of jig, and that's what I've got here. I first cut a mitre on one end and then slip my piece of wood in, and then that allows me to make the cut. And that's then yet another one cut to precisely the right length. Now when you're setting up to do the cut uh, on the end before you put it into the jig, uh, it's sometimes a little awkward to get this sitting nicely. And so use a block of wood like this and that helps to keep this square to the tabletop. Now, gluing up is pretty straightforward. Uh, I'm taking one of the blanks that I've created and I'm then going to just put some glue along here and making sure that glue goes into the channel, of course. Now, you don't need too much and it doesn't need to take very long. And when you put some glue on, I then use a brush in order to get that glue spread out well. You need to check your position, make sure it's in the right place, and take your time over this because these bits are pretty tricky to remove if you've put them in and it's in the wrong place. So once you're convinced it's in the right place, just give it a little tap, and only do it at one end, and then check again that it's in the right place. Yes, it is. And final check. Yeah, perfect, of course. And then you go do the other side. Pretty straightforward, really. Now, once you've got the two opposing long faces done, I then go along with a pair of cramps like this. And the idea is I'm going to work my way along the length just to get it squished up. That helps the glue to really suck in there nice and tight. And I can now very carefully position that. That's fine. That's only loosely in place. And now we can do the final clamping up. Now you will need to clean some of these uh, edges up, um, I'm sure, and so uh, you need to make sure you do it uh, nice and gently. And if you're worried about uh, getting them nice and square, you can always use a gadget like this, which I got uh, from Veritas, and this is a magnet, fits on the side of your jointer or plane, and that helps you to maintain a nice right angle edge. Well, I'm getting ready to do the domino uh, mortise slots in all of this wood now. I'm going to first of all do all the domino mortises in the sides and the rear pieces. Those slots which are going into the fronts I'll do separately because there's some little bits of jiggery pokery there. Now the dominoes I'll be using for all of these joints are 6mm across and they're 40 millimeters long. And that means for joints like this, I have to do an asymmetric joint. There'll be a 15 millimeter deep slot in this piece, for example, and a 25 millimeter deep domino slot on this side. Now I've marked it all up, and for the small drawers and the intermediate drawers, I'm having three dominoes at each joint. And for the large drawers, I'm having four dominoes at each joint. I'm going to do all of the 25mm deep domino slots now, and that means 
all my wood will be flat down like this. They're all marked and it's going to be a very quick and easy operation. And that's the last of the domino slots and the ends. Now I've used my big Rotex 150 sander uh, to deal with these fronts of the drawers. Now initially the side edging uh, was proud of the surface and so I started at 80 grit. And you mustn't be frightened of a big sander like this. It's, this is a gentle giant. It's beautiful. So I used 80 grit just to knock off the edges of the, the banding that I've put round. I then went down to 120 and did everything front and back. And I've now finished off at 180 grit. And that's made a lovely finish to the surface. Mm -hmm.